This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> Let's try and put some sex back into the Sir Bella. I think Sir sort of missed the trick with this amplifier because I can remember at the time hearing these things about a pedal platform and thinking, what does that really mean? And when you say an amp is a pedal platform, to me, one of the, the messages that kind of comes alongside that is that it doesn't necessarily have a great deal of character. You might think of words like neutral um, and you might not think of, I don't know, to me, it di didn't really sell the amplifier in a way that I think does it justice. Because honestly, after kind of recording the introduction, which I'm gonna put at the end because I ended up playing like a lot. First clean, then with a Marshall Blues Breaker, then with an Ibanez TS-10. And it just, to me, does a beautiful thing with a Stratocaster. And I just texted Jake Loosemore, so this is Jake's amplifier. I said, that's the best amp I've ever played, I think. So what even is the Sir Bella? So the Sir Bella was based on uh, Scott Henderson's Bandmaster. Now, I used to think the story went something like it was based on a Dumble modded Bandmaster. John Sir says it was some mods that were done to a Bandmaster that with a prototype for the Bella. Um, John Sir is familiar with a bunch of Dumble stuff and Scott Henderson did have a Dumble. I don't know if legally they'd get away with saying that this is a Dumble modded Bandmaster clone. It certainly sounds like there's some of that in there and he has talked about an Ultraphonics um, mod being part of the DNA of this amplifier. And Scott Henderson, surprisingly enough, so he paid £1,500 for his Dumble modded Bandmaster. And once the Cerebella was out, he sold it, I think, for 16000 pocketed a bit of cash. I imagine that would be worth even more now. A, a pretty serious amplifier. Certainly has some Dumble DNA in there by the sounds of things. And I think that is probably more the, the thing that's going to attract people to this amplifier than this idea of a pedal platform. If you had said this is based on some of the fine work that, that Dumble did, um, we've added some tweaks of our own. If they'd said up front, you know, this is a Jim Kelly created spring reverb um, because Jim Kelly created some of the more respected amplifiers in the world. Joe Bonamassa, huge fan. They're not as well known as something like a Dumble, but Jim Kelly amps are super rare as well and Sir did make a recreation of them. Bella is sort of like a a hot rodded Fender Bandmaster with some Dumble mods kind of chucked in. It's got an effects loop which 
whatever. It's got a reverb which really goes. I, I love the reverb on this amplifier. It's a very bright, direct sounding amplifier. It cuts through amazingly, um, but it also seems to be like a smokiness to the top end. I don't know, you know, how you might want to describe that, but when I plugged in the Ibanez TS10, it's kind of got an airiness to it. I think that's because it's got quite an open, uh, bright sound to it. There is a bright switch with three positions where you can go even brighter still. To me, it doesn't really need that. There is also a 6 dB boost, which you can crank things up a bit more. And I honestly don't feel like I needed that either because I tend to play the amp actually clean and then, you know, use a, a drive for, for the dirt. Jake has put in an EV speaker in it, which I think really brings it to life even more. The EV speaker be something that someone like Joe Bonamassa might have used in the past. I think Dumble amps are typically paired with an EV speaker or a uh, Celestian 165, right? That's the kind of Mayer uh, Robin Ford type speaker. It's incredibly heavy now because I think even without the speaker, it's 50 pounds, but hand wired, there were the last time I saw on a forum, because basically uh, John Sir chats on the gear page and is quite vocal about different things. That's where you can find quite a lot of information about this amplifier um, and, you know, referencing things like the Dumble modded Bandmaster, referencing things with Scott. He talks about intensely modifying a Bandmaster, that kind of being a starting point. And yeah, you can get on there and, and chat. I think his name used to be Husky on there. It's now OSO. Seems like a, a really down to earth guy has worked on a bunch of Dumble amplifiers, hand-wired in California, I believe, that where Sura based, and basically there were two guys hand-wiring them for, I don't know if that's still the case, but it certainly was the case at one time. A really reasonably priced, I think, for what you're getting amplifier. Um, I think it's probably somewhere comparable with like a Fender hand-wired 64. You know, you're not cr playing crazy two rock prices, but it's certainly in that vein of amplifier. Uh, Jake has some really other great amplifiers he's got a fender vibroverb and he's got a two rock silver string sterling um and this holds its own with them i think this is just an incredible little amplifier 22 watts 44 watts switchable the 22 watts is actually not that much quieter than the 44 watts that might be one area that might trip some folks up you know if you had a master volume on there maybe you'd lose a certain amount of things, but it does have an effects loop, so I guess you could use a volume in the effects loop. Scott Henderson himself doesn't use the reverb version. He uses the non-reverb. Mike Landau, I think, also uses one of them, or Michael Landau, I can't remember. I think you have to say that. Andy Wood, uh, Matteo Sassato used one for a long time, an incredibly great sounding amplifier. And don't be put off by the idea that it's a pedal platform. It's an incredible sounding amplifier in its own right. And I played for ages, just plug straight into it. You don't need a pedal to make it come to life. It just sounds, I think, pretty great. On the brighter side, maybe, with a Strat, sounds huge. Uh, I think it's a great amp. Obviously, Andy Wood can also get some incredible tones out of it on the kind of driven side. Sean Tubbs as well demos with one of these. What's not to like? Uh, let me know your thoughts if you tried a Cerebella. Does pedal platform put you off at all? Um, what do you reckon? I'd love to know your thoughts. Here's some more demo-y stuff. I might have to try and get one of these. I don't want to forget the settings. These are the settings that Jake had here. I think he brought it straight from a gig. Volume at three, treble at three, bass here just past six, maybe like seven. Presence at two and the reverb here just between two and three. I was using it in the 44 watt mode. Let's chuck it into 22 watt mode. So the way that this works, you've got no mid control, but as we turn down bass and treble, I think the mid resistor is somewhere around 6.8K. I think I've been reading this, what the Fender Blackface thing is doing. Less of the scoop thing going on. Okay. We've also got a bright switch. that on. 
um, as you crank the pitch. switch here so triple back to three boost gives minus 6 db no plus 6 db That's really, really, really too loud for home use. Um, but what I'm liking about it is that basically it just sounds. direct and really touch sensitive and sounds you know basically got that amazing kind of fendery dumbly sound um, the reverb designed by Jim Kelly I believe uh, sounds You know, it's more than just a pedal platform amp, this thing. Uh, let me just plug in my pedal board quickly. So this is an angry driver kicking on now. Mm -hmm. 